tucked away in the southwestern corner of the South Island lies a 1.2 million hectare time capsule of a beautiful prehistoric New Zealand. Luckily, keen adventurers can explore Fiordland's unique landscape through one of the many walking tracks that weave through this glacially carved land. One of New Zealand's great walks takes you high above Fiordland for a truly breathtaking alpine adventure. The Kepler Track. The Kepler Track is a 60 kilometre loop that takes you along lakes, through dense beech forest and up into a spectacular alpine world. The alpine section of the Kepler Track runs for approximately 14.6 kilometres and offers stunning panoramic views of Tianu and the neighbouring mountain ranges. The Great Walk season is the best time of year to attempt this tramp as you'll find all the huts are fully open and track conditions are actively monitored and managed. The Kepler's close proximity to Tiano leads people to believe that it's suitable for tramping year round. But outside of the great walk season, this is not a good idea, as facilities are greatly reduced and snow normally covers the track, making it hard to see. The average daily summer temperature normally sits around five to nine degrees and true to Fiordland form, you can expect rain for over 200 days of the year. It's important to remember that you will be in an alpine environment, which means there is a good chance you'll experience heavy rain, strong winds, snow and freezing temperatures, even during the Great Walk season. So, warm and waterproof clothing will be essential. You'll also need a good pair of tramping boots and make sure you carry enough water for the whole day. As with all walks and tramps in New Zealand, make sure you leave your intentions with a trusted contact and inform them when you've finished your tramp. You can find out more about leaving your intentions at the Mountain Safety Council website. Day one of your journey starts on the shores of Lake Tiano. From here, you'll tramp through the forest for about an hour and a half before reaching Broad Bay Campsite. This is where the climbing begins as you'll tramp 8.2 kilometres up to Luxmore Hut, which takes approximately three to four hours. A good amount of fitness is needed, as this will be a steep, steady climb to the top. Once you leave the bush line, you will be exposed to an open alpine environment. Wind and rain can be especially brutal at this point, so take care on your final push to Luxmore Hut, as you will already be tired from a long day of tramping. Your second day consists of a five to six hour tramp along the ridge line to Iris Burn Hut. This means that you will be left exposed to any and all weather that comes your way. With very little shelter and no alternative routes to take, talk to the hut warden and consult the weather forecast before committing to a full day on the ridgeline. If you decide to carry on, then your day will start with a gentle climb up Mount Luxmore. You will be fairly sheltered by the mountain on this section, but as you round the corner, you will be met with the full brunt of any incoming fronts. This makes this spot a good point to stop and assess the conditions for the rest of the day. Look to the west to see what weather may be coming, and then you can make an informed decision on whether to continue on or turn back and try again on a better day. Avalanches are a very real risk during winter and spring. Don't continue past this point if snow has settled on the ground, unless you are experienced in off-track navigation, avalanche awareness and winter climbing, as well as carrying the proper equipment to safely travel over snow. If no snow is present, then you will continue on to forest burn shelter, the track is well formed most of the way, with it narrowing down in some parts, so just watch your step in these sections. Two hours after leaving the hut, you will reach the forest burn shelter. This is a very basic emergency shelter that lets you take a break from the elements and have some lunch. You will also find a toilet here, but remember that this shelter is not for sleeping in, unless it's an emergency. You'll continue along the ridgeline for a further two hours before reaching Hanging Valley Shelter. The track weaves up and down along the way, and you'll get some pretty stunning views of Fiordland. Hanging Valley Shelter is another good spot to stop and have a break from the elements. A toilet is also available here and again, no sleeping unless it's an emergency. From here, you'll begin the descent down into the bush line. Some stairs have been installed to make this section a bit easier for you. Take care and watch your footing as you descend as there is a steep drop off on both sides and bad weather can make this a very hazardous descent. Shortly after, you will reach the end of the ridgeline and start zigzagging down into the bush. This steep descent continues the whole way down to Iris Burn Hut and it takes approximately an hour and a half from this point. Walking poles can be really helpful in reducing the stress on your knees. 
Iris Burn Hut is a very welcome sight and marks the end of the Alpine section. From here, the tramp will take another two days, bringing you down the Iris Burn Valley and along the shore of Lake Manapauri. The Kepler Track offers some of the best alpine scenery in the world, but be sure to know what you're committing to. Aim to walk only during the Great Walk season. Find out the latest information on track conditions by talking to the dock staff at the Fiordland National Park Visitor Centre in Tiano. Make sure you check the official Fiordland National Park weather forecast at metservice.com. And finally, don't forget to leave your intentions with a trusted contact. Now, get out there and enjoy one of New Zealand's best alpine adventures.